for entry point of view as i said the important is uh, air cooled and water cooled chiller so we'll discuss in detail but in order to understand this air cooled and water cooled chiller first you must know this cell and tube heat exchanger because in air cooled as well as in water cooled you'll find cell and tube evaporator and in water cooled you'll find cell and tube evaporator as well as cell, cell, cell and tube condenser so this cell and tube heat exchanger first you must have the idea this is simple you can find on this image you see why we are calling shell and tube the outer one this is a section view the outer one is a shell this one and inside you'll find the tubes you see this is a these are all tubes so here you see for example i'm using this shell and tube as say evaporator for example or else Okay, we can take as a condenser because you can able to understand this as a condenser easily because you know the vapor compression cycle. So if I use this as a condenser, this is used to cool the refrigerant by using water. If I use this as an evaporator, then this is used to cool the water by using refrigerant. Okay, so in both the cases, it heat exchanger, but in it is going to be in reverse. So just try to understand in any one option. For example, you can consider as a condenser or evaporator so let me show you this water in and out first you see here this red color you can consider as a hot h2o in means hot water in and this blue color you can consider as a h2o this cold h2 out in as hot and out as cold it means this shell and tube i'm using as a condenser Okay, because this is used to, sorry, my mistake. This is used, I'm using this as a evaporator because this is used to cool the water. Na. If I use this to cool the refrigerant, that case is going to be condenser. But in this image, since this inlet is red color represent hot and the cold color represent, sorry, the blue color represent this cold. So we can consider as per this image, this is, we can consider this as an evaporator. So water in, from this and water out this and the water is going to be circulate inside this shell not in the tube okay you see and in the shell you'll find the baffles baffle is like a this will guide the water for example if i remove these baffles what will happen the water will enter and it will create a lot of turbulency and the baffle will provide you provide that guide to the water you see here the water can go up then down so you'll find this path so it can extract or it can exchange the heat efficiently this is a construction for this heat exchanger okay so water in and out in the shell and you see you can consider the refrigerant in as here this is refrigerant in and this we can consider as a refrigerant out and the refrigerant will in in the tube and this will find here you'll find a divider the, ch the chill refrigerant will enter in these tubes and you see here it may return and come out as a hot refrigerant so this refrigerant is used to extract the heat from the water okay so this we can call as a heat exchanger and in this case this is a sorry evaporator because this is used to cool the water in a simple process so remember in the shell the water is going to circulate in the tube the refrigerant is going to circulate in the normal case we have flooded type shell and tube uh, evaporator also in that case the case is going to be reversed that is for uh, higher capacity but in in most commonly in, in the chiller air cooler and water cooler except the higher capacities in the in the shell you will find water and in the tube you will find refrigerant and this we can call as a shell and tube heat exchanger can be used for condenser can be used for evaporator and the same I'm, I'll show you in the air cooled chiller as well as in water cooled chiller. In air cooled chiller and in air and water cooled chiller, this we are using as evaporator. Plus in water cooled chiller, the same heat exchanger you'll find for condenser also. So I think you got the idea what is shell and tube heat exchanger. Next we'll talk about this air cooled chiller. First, till now what we discuss this till this VRF system, the refrigerant is responsible to cool the air. But now in chill water system. The chill water is responsible to cool the air and that water we are going to from the water we are going to reject the heat to the refrigerant okay that is a major difference between the dx and the chill water system so here you can try to understand with the line diagram i'll show i'll show you with the drawing also but first some idea you see this is the air cooled chiller which we can place outside the building on the roof 
or outside the building. We cannot place inside the building because we are using this air cooled condenser. I'll show you some image to get the clear idea. So this is complete air cooled chiller. And this pump at this level we can call as a primary pump. In actual practice, you'll find only primary or primary plus secondary, or you may find primary plus secondary plus tertiary for big project. That we'll discuss in part five in detail. At this level, just I'm trying to explain the concept of air cool and water cool chiller. So this is an air cool chiller, and this you can consider as a chill water pump primary, and you can consider this as AH1, AH2. Forget about this boiler. In that you'll find the heating system also that we'll discuss later. At this level, just we're focusing on this chiller. So you see, from this chiller, the chill water is going to be circulate and supply in what cooling coil of evaporator and they, this evaporator can be inside the AHU or can be inside this FCU to cool the air further with more details let me open one drawing with that you can try to understand the clear concept but before this let me show you some images you'll get the idea uh, this is an installation of a chiller with a crane belongs to a Oman project they're doing the preparation and all uh, you see in this the above one these are all Conden uh, condenser you see this air cool condenser you can find the fins inside you'll find the tubes and this is shell and tube evaporator and you'll find the expansion and other side you'll find the compressors also You see inside this cabinet you'll find the compressor i'll show you the closer view and this is a foundation you need to prepare before installing this chiller and in between for in between the foundation and uh, the chiller we'll use the isolator also to reduce the vibration some additional points related to installation but at this level just try to find out the different components of the chiller Now you see here in this chiller here three cabinets here three cabinets so total six compressor and in between this is a electrical control and uh, above that you'll find all what condenser and on the top you'll find the fan so with this construction you can find say air cooled chiller and we are placing outside because in water cooled chiller you'll not find the fans in air cooled chiller only you'll find the fan because the major difference between air cool and water cool is the condensing side only okay we'll do the conclusion at the end let me proceed You can find the closer view of the fins inside you'll find the tube so this is a coil heat exchanger for condenser and you can verify the fans also from the top view these are all condenser fan used to cool the condenser and you know the vapor cooling cycle the same cycle but the construction is different so let me one let me open one drawing to understand this cycle on screen you see in chiller you'll find uh, two cycle at this level i'm talking about air cool chiller in air cool chiller you'll find two cycle one is a primary cycle and second is a secondary cycle and inside this chiller you see this compressor these are all multiple compressor and here added one condenser but you'll find the n number of condensers and expansion and a shell and tube evaporator okay and this complete we can call as a primary cycle or refrigeration cycle and you already are aware of this vapor i'm talking about vapor compression cycle but in chiller we used to call this as a primary cycle because in chiller you will find the secondary cycle also and this piping you see from the chiller you can see the direction of uh, water you see chill water out and this chill water return so this cycle we can call as a secondary or chill water cycle and you know the primary cycle is of uh, copper and that will take care by the vendor but if you talk about the secondary cycle as a hvc engineer your role is to design this pipe size i'm talking about the chill water pipe sizing and the secondary cycle is of carbon steel and under carbon steel you'll find black steel uh, low carbon steel or mild steel Okay, so most commonly in actual practice, in India you'll find 
mild steel ms pipes in gulf you'll find black steel of schedule 40 remember this is a class of the pipe we'll discuss more about this in part 5 at this level just i'm focusing on the cycle and this also with insulation i'll show you the preview of this piping also but let me complete this concept so you know the cycle uh, vapor compression cycle after compression the refrigerant will enter in the condenser and then expansion then it will enter in shell and tube what in this case shell and tube evaporator and what will happen inside the evaporator just now we discussed now so refrigerant in what refrigerant in as chill refrigerant refrigerant out as hot refrigerant okay and you see the direction of water this is what h2o in and this is h2o out and if you talk about standard standard temperature remember the chill water in most uh, in most uh, or almost all manufacturer catalog you'll find the standard 54 degree fahrenheit and chill water out is 44 degree fahrenheit apart from this you may find this 50 degree fahrenheit also as a chill water temperature but in present market uh, if you talk about the standard chiller you will find this 44 degree Fahrenheit, nothing but uh, we can consider in between 6 to 7 degree centigrade is a standard temperature of chill water. And based on this, we have the conversion like 1 TR equal to 2.4 GPM. We'll discuss about this. At this level, just remember this point. Now, you see this water in, in as what cold water and what will happen? Circulate on the coil and loses the heat and out as what? Is online? Cold water. Yes, out as a chill water. So you, you see, I use the term cold and chill. So we are not using the hot. We can consider the hot also, but it's not a very hot or a boiled water. So we used to call cold water in, or this uh, in actual practice, we used to call chill water return and chill water supply. So this line, for example, if I in if I write some points, you see, I'm considering this as say point one. This I'm considering as point two. This is point three and say this is point 0.4 so remember point 0.1 to 2 is what chws chill water supply and point 0.3 to point 0.4 we can consider as chwr with respect to the system uh, if we talk about the chiller this this line we can call as an inlet and this we can call as a supply to the chiller so if you talk about the equipment, the case is going to be different. Here I'm talking about the supply return as with respect to the system. Okay, so with respect to the system, the supply to the chiller comes under return line and supply from the chiller comes under supply line. Remember this at the time of pipe sizing also we'll, we need to identify this uh, direction. Next, so you see in as a cold water loses the heat to the refrigerant out as a chill water. And this chill water with the insulated pipe is going to supply to one more heat exchanger inside what AHU and you know what is AHU or it can be AHU or it can be FCU as per the requirement and in actual practice you see in, in this drawing you will find one AHU but you see the pipe will continue and can connect to n number of FCU or AHU as per the capacity of the system okay so you see this chill water will enter in cooling coil of AHU and you know what will happen in AHU and this air site. Same like a ductable split. Instead of connecting this pipe from the condensing unit, we are connecting the pipe from the chiller to supply the chill water instead of the refrigerant. So the rest of the thing inside, you, you know, we can provide the fresh air. All this detail you can, you can consider same like a ductable split, what we discussed, like call piece, then supply return, etc. Okay, and you see this, the cooling effect or the heat will extract from the room air and the hot water or we can say chill water return from this point 3 with this pump and pump is used for what to circulate the water and in this case this we can call as a primary pump because this pump is used to supply the water to the chiller in actual practice you'll find the pump set here that we used to call as a secondary pump that story we'll discuss later we have a as i said now this is part one of this system the detail of this you'll find in chill water system chill water system i'm considering as part five of the syllabus now Okay, so at this level, wantedly, I'm I'm not explaining this options to avoid confusion. Because if you know the system, if you know this concept, then we can think for 
the remaining in detail with the uh, expansion tag expansion tank air separator a lot of things with all hookups nothing but valve package with more details so you see this pump is used to supply the water back to the chiller and the cycle continue so this is about the air cooled chiller and why we are calling air cooled chiller remember we are cooling this condenser by using the air that's the reason this system or this chiller we used to call as air cooled chiller compared with the water cooled chiller in water cooled chiller the condensing unit we are going to use we are going to cool by using water and water we are going to cool by using cooling tower so, so you'll find one more circuit in uh, water cooled chiller that i'll show you next but before this any confusion in the cycle all right no, yeah. yeah apart from this you see this this cell foundation nothing but base is required to construct and the dimension of this base you can find out from the shop drawing and the shop drawing means you know at the time of construction means at the time of installation so the actual dimension of this foundation you can find out from the catalog of the manufacturer and the same will follow in the shop drawing like based on this we'll construct and before installing the chiller or in between this base and this chiller you'll find this spring isolators to cut the vibration because in that you'll find the multiple compressors so tons of uh, tons of transferring the vibration to the slab and it's placed on the roof so it may transfer the vibration and create noise and it may affect to the strength of that structure also so we require the spring isolator oh one minute i think i have an image for this here my example of a spring isolator this is used to reduce the vibration not only for this even for ahu or for ceiling suspended ahu floor moderate ahus you'll find this isolators which is required to cut the vibration mm -hmm.